Hey there, I'm the Complex Games Apologist, and I want to get out a quick question-response video about some of the things that people have asked about regarding Harn. So here we go. One of the first questions was, what is the state of the game, the additions, and which ones would I recommend? So this requires some disambiguation. Harn is a campaign world. Harn Master is a role-playing game. There are two companies publishing material for Harn and Harn Master. There's Colestia, which is a fork which the creator of Harn created in 1997, which publishes e-products only. Um, and it is mostly focused on stuff outside of the Harnic subcontinent, uh, developing Venerive, which is the area of the continent very nearby, the Europe, if Harn is Britain. Uh, and they have a fair amount of stuff developed for Shell MB, which I mentioned in the Kingdoms video. And then there's Columbia Games, which uh, operates on a more conventional model and seems to uh, be able to divvy out writing assignments to have stuff coming out. They recently fleshed out the Kingdom of Meldrin, finally, uh, from a 12-page article into one of their better Kingdom okay. modules. So various editions of the games and the setting. There's only one edition of Harn as a setting, and it's always going to be in 720. In other words, there's only one year. This isn't like Forgotten Realms where they fiddled around with what year it was and had some progression. It's up to you to progress the timeline or to rewind it uh, to a particular point in time that you prefer. And I think that that's the best, because that means that any time that a new author comes in and interjects extra material, uh, it's more likely to stay consistent, and there's a lot of internal consistency with Harn. It's awesome. Okay, so that's the setting. The system, um, there's two editions of Harn Master, uh, one by Columbia Games and one by Colestia, which we discussed earlier with the two companies. Uh, I think that Harn Master Gold is a little bit more modern, but Harnmaster Gold is also troubled by a really terrible location of information and information density. Uh, the Dictionary of Skills, I think, is sometimes in a sidebar. How you roll for initiative is in one place. Uh, how you recover from wounds is in another. It's, um, it's very difficult to wrap your head around, and it causes lots of lost hang time calculation moments at the table. I'm a great Hackmaster 4th Edition GM. Uh, that game is complicated. The game's got a lot going on, but as far as hang time, as far as everybody waiting for me to figure out how to interpret the rules, how to keep to the simulation aspect of the game, uh, that doesn't happen with Hackmaster. Uh, I've been that good with GURPS in the past, where I can, except for gun battles, which have a myriad of modifiers, uh, I can handle GURPS pretty quickly. I just don't think that it's that way when it comes down to Harn Master. It's, it's a slow system, um, regardless of, of which one. There are cool ideas in Harn Master, and I would recommend the religion supplements for Harn Master from Columbia Games. I would recommend the magic supplement from Celestia. And I would recommend either edition's core book to kind of inform you about what the system and the setting consider to be the most important elements in play. As in, what does the game care about? What does the setting care about? What's important to have written down on your character sheet? And both of those systems, both editions, will inform you that. I would say, though, go and play a nice simulation-y, crunchy game that isn't Harn Master. I've learned my lesson. Harn is written where it features NPCs uh, using the Harn Master stat line, which is primarily just a percentile-based skill system, not unlike RuneQuest, which is currently, I think, in its best form being published as Mithras by the design mechanism. You could also uh, play Harn in Rollmaster. You could play Harn in, I think, Hackmaster 5th edition would be a good fit. 4th edition less so because it's more focused on leveling up and treasures and 
a parody of first edition Dungeons and Dragons, but either would suffice. I think you could play in GURPS, you could play in Harn using the Burning Wheel, and that'd be especially suited because of the life path system, which is present there, which would serve to really immerse folks. There are good and bad things about the Harn Master system. I did run my campaign with it, at least until my players almost, mm, suffice it to say, I would say they kind of went on strike with being engaged with the rules portion of the game. There are things that we loved about it. I think that the way that it does D100 roll under is really elegant. It uh, Basically, if you roll a multiple of five, you're getting a critical success or a critical failure, and I expounded upon that to do double digits, as in like 11, 22, 33, to have those be some sort of environmental result, where a sword breaks or some conspiracy of events intervenes in a roll, and using that, you get a, a very quick play of uh, out of combat stuff. The combat system, however, is fraught. Too many different systems and is sort of undecided, and the pacing is uh, unfortunate. I think that the wounds that result from it are very personal and interesting, and lead to some really good stories of recovery and convalescence, and everybody kind of rallying around a wounded player character to try and save him. And I think that it does sort of interestingly serve the archer and the knife thrower or axe thrower, but it does so at the expense of uh, using a archery system, which I think was even coming from the complex games apologist, a little too much uh, thematically. It's basically a lot like the aces and eights uh, shot clock, but in a game that is kind of medieval and where archery is not a gun battle, but uh, kind of a mode of assassination, possibly something that you do every day to kind of wear someone down because arrows uh unless they're shot by an english longbow actually aren't particularly lethal you have to shoot someone a lot of times um and that's in conflict with how long it takes to resolve a single archery shot and so i i would rather play in a system that has more provision for the abstractions of combat uh, when it comes to rapid fire. I think that there's really good stuff with active defense that reminds me of GURPS or the OBDB split in Rollmaster. So I like both of those. I think there's the potential to play in a lighter system, um, if that's your cup of tea. As you know, it's not for me. However, I do have a favored light system that I think is well suited, which is Spellbound Kingdoms, which one day I'll do a video about, but for now I'm just going to give it a shout out. And I think that you could reasonably expect to play uh, a decent Harn game using The Dark Eye, which is a German RPG which has an upcoming new iteration, new translation coming into play. What's the good side besides the D100 roll? There's the mode of character creation and the mode of skill advancement, which uses skill base, uh, which is basically a way of assessing talent. Uh, for the character and then you can kind of populate the sheet pretty quickly it uses not only like Opt-in skills, but then there's baseline skills like condition and mobility and intrigue and The like oratory I think is another and that everybody has those and that those are sort of a basic resolution mechanic uh, anytime that you need to ask, like, well, how did, how well did your character say it and you don't want to roleplay through it? It's there on the character sheet. If you're not the type to roll for social skills, it still informs your roleplaying. I also liked the stat line. I liked that it was content to add more 3 to 18 stats. It uses 3 to 18 stats, not unlike BRP and not unlike Hackmaster. Um, it's content to have a stat for eyesight and hearing... It's content to have a stat for aura, which is, roughly speaking, someone's attunement to magic. So there's some cool stuff in there. And then it also, I think, serves as a descriptive element for the very unique magic system in Harn, the very unique way that Harn, as a world, understands magic. Uh, most conventional magic users 
operate on a six slice color pie, which I'll need to do a video about to explain to you. And Harnmaster has a pretty interesting impl implementation of it. I think that the flavor side of it really talks about the investment that your character does in meditation and in building up what they call principle, which is a reserve of force, which you can invest principle into a focus, like a wand or the like. And I think that all told, I think GURPS is probably the closest uh, in resonance to that. You would have to do some work to get that color pie to work with Rollmaster's magic system. Um, and ultimately that's my biggest hang up with moving, migrating Harn into a different rule system is getting it right with the very poetic and interesting way that the color pie is divided in Harn. So with that in mind, uh, I put it to you that my overall rating of Harn Master is that it's not well formatted. Oh, I'm sorry. There is one more thing about Harn Master, which is that I think it also creates a good economy for believers in a god with the piety point mechanic that you go to church and there's a percentage chance that basically your actions are noticed for a given day and you store up some piety points. And those piety points can be spent on divine intervention rolls or on invoking your conventional clerical spells. And one thing that I'm going to need to talk about eventually is the way that Harnmaster handles religion and how Harn as a setting handles religion because this is one of the really unique cool things about the setting is that churches and gods are not taken for granted. They are a super flavorful part of the system. They need to eat like everything else. They need to pay their priests. They need to put bread on the table and they need to find their place in society because the magic that they dispense is not always available. Uh, like I said about piety points, you can be a devout follower and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have the points to go and actually cast spells. And it's also, the setting is sort of welcome to the idea of uh, clerical spellcasting being agnostic or, or not there. The same goes with magic. Um, there's multiple layers of ambiguity built up in the setting side of the game where there's chantries of arcane lore, there are the Savic Nor religion, which is a lot like the Maesters from Westeros, and then there are the Sheikh Favar, which are wizards, maybe, but they kind of lead a closeted existence, not unlike mages in Mage the Ascension, in that they really don't want to get burnt at the stake, and they don't want to be seen as tampering with events, even when they are, because that means people would come for them basically. And it would also obstruct their ability to conduct psychohistory if there was a Hawthorne effect and people knew they were being messed with. Okay, so Harn Master, Harn over here. Most of the stuff that's coming out now is pretty agnostic uh, as far as system and where it does have stat lines. Uh, the stuff, this is especially Columbia Games is the only one that's publishing with stat lines, um, you know, you get percentiles of the skills that the people have. It's pretty easy to translate that into other systems. Um, if you rely on built NPCs, uh, neither company between Celestia and Columbia are going to give you what you need. Unfortunately, they don't really stat down to the combat ready level where you would have like the damage resistances of the individual areas of the body. Yeah, the combat system is that complex. Okay, so we're getting a little bit uh, rambly. There was a question about what is the best entre point, the entree to Harn as a setting. And my answer to that is uh, Kaldor, specifically the Columbia Games Kaldor module, because you're going to be able to use the most stuff from Lithia, uh, the fan website, to flush it out. And then you're probably going to want, like, the capital city and one of the earldoms. Uh, this is all on RPG now. I would go PDF and print it out yourself because the print stuff that you get from Columbia is... Um, 
it's not bad, but I think you can do more at Kinko's to personalize how you want it printed out than you could the other way. Of course, if you can pick up stuff secondhand, um, if you can pick up the stuff that was published in the 80s, I think by all means do so. It's super cool uh, just handling that stuff. I love it. Um, and if you can get a deal on that stuff, I would say go for that. Uh, one commenter mentioned Field of Daisies, which is an introductory adventure which was put together and given away free for uh, free RPG day. And uh, it's not bad. I think it's sort of focused on characters being villagers in a single village. A lot of the adventures are set up that way with kind of ordinary folks, uh, not unlike Stranger Things, where you get uh, regular people who mostly work for a living that are sucked into an adventure and are members of a community and already know each other that way. I think that if you want uh, grander storytelling, the adventure modules need to be arrived at at a later point. I had a story not unlike A Knight's Tale where I set up kind of a cast of characters including an aspiring squire who got knighted and they went to a tournament and they accepted sort of a mission to investigate a mine which was uh, being menaced by a troll and that's how they arrived at one of the primary adventures for the setting. So what I mean to say by that is that if you want to have a more Ken Follett-ish story, if you want to have a more varied cast of characters beyond just villagers, then the adventure modules are not a great starting point. You're going to need to engage your TV writer mind and use all the ammunition, all the details that the setting gives you to flick that switch. I'm a very improvisational GM, so I have my binders in front of me. I listen to what kind of characters the players have created. I use that pre-game method that's described in Harn Master, but you could use in any other method where you kind of play out starting from age 12 until the beginning of the game, what kind of skills and abilities the character picks up. And that's how I go about that. Okay, so I think we answered all those questions. Uh, this is a bit of a ramble and we shall see how much I edit it. Uh, my son is napping right now, and that's super awesome. And that's how we get to make videos like this uh, most of the time. And I think the next time we'll be seeing a video about the gods of Harn and about the way religion works in Harn. And hopefully we'll do a video about the color pie of how Harnic magic is understood. For now, I, I think I bid you a great autumn as it progresses, and it's really exciting to see that so many people are interested in this first video that I put out. And the Kingdom video, which uh, is a little sloppy, but I really wanted to get out uh, a first issue so that you guys would believe me that it's going to be a series. Uh, anything else that you guys want to see on the channel, let me know. Um, it's tough right now, being a stay-at-home dad. There's teething, separation anxiety is at its peak, and I also really like him, and we really like to hang out. And I also am trying to work on my music hobby a little bit too. But it's great to be back, it's great to be making videos. Catch you later.